I want the next two weeks you to produce a uh, draft or a long memo, and she'll produce uh, something, and I'll take it, and I go to my word processor, and I write my draft. I give it back to her. She thinks hers is better. <laughs> but there we are. Uh, and she redoes it, and I go then take it, and I usually do from scratch, and then we're back and forth, and finally we get something I'm satisfied with, and probably she is, and we send it around to the court. And at that point, people start to join, and now it's absolutely for real and definite. And I want those little notes that say, I join your opinion. And as soon as I have five on an opinion, that's the court. But somebody can write a dissent, or they can write a concurrence. And sometimes the whole court flips. Not too often, but sometimes. And uh, often, often, I join if you, if you do this, or if you do that, so it's modified. And eventually, everybody's modified, joined, written his own, nothing more to say. And as soon as no one, as soon as all nine of us, we have nothing more to say, that's it. And the opinion comes down. Okay? There you have it. That's it. And so it takes 15, 20 minutes to explain. But now you know, after 15 or 20 minutes, what, how the Supreme Court works. And of course, the interest in it is the substance. But it is driven day to day by the almost mechanical-like procedures that I've just described. And that's why Tony Kennedy, when I was first came there, said to me, it's more like an express train than you'll ever think. And it is. It is. It keeps uh, coming like that. What's amazing about it is not necessary. We're judges. You know, we're judges. We behave like judges. We act like judges. We get on well. Never, I've never heard a, a, a raised voice in that conference room. Uh, I've never heard one judge in that room say anything slighting about another. It's highly professional. We have lunch together. Uh, sometimes we play bridge together. Uh, it's not backslapping, let's go to the bar. But it is friendly, cordial, and professional. And uh, that's what the atmosphere, that's what the atmosphere uh, is. Probably half of our opinions are uh, unanimous. Uh, the five fours are maybe 20%, and they're not always the same five and always the same four. But of course, quite often, the five fours are the opinions that the press is interested in because the public has a particular interest because they have some kind of political or social overtone, and so that's what we've written about, and so that's what people think we do. That is part of what we do, but it's far from the whole story of what we do. And there are only a few cases like that common there are many that are closer to the comma than they are to abortion. And uh, what's the most exciting thing about it? No. What is the most meaningful thing about it? The most meaningful thing about it, I think, is sitting on that bench and seeing in front of me people of every race, every religion, every point of view. And I point that out. We talk, I went to Stanford once and talked to the audience there about Bush versus Gore. And I said, you know, the most the thing I take away from that, I, I wrote a dissent in that opinion, in that case. I said, but I heard uh, uh, um, Senator Reed, who is uh, certainly not probably on the Democratic side, he probably thinks the case was wrong inside as, 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 as I do. He said, the most remarkable thing about the case is uh, something rarely remarked. It's that despite the fact that it's important, and pretty unpopular, at least among half the population, or maybe a little more than half, but the, 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 uh, it was unpopular uh, and wrong, in his opinion, in my opinion, but people followed it. And uh, they didn't uh, have riots in the streets. And uh, weren't throwing stones. So I say that to the Stanford audience, and then I realize that I said, better add something. I say, I know as I say that, you're all sitting there nodding, but about 20% of you, if not more, are thinking, too bad there aren't, weren't any riots. Too bad there weren't a few stones thrown, etc. And uh, I say, just before you reach that conclusion, turn on your television set and uh, see what happens in countries uh, who decide their major problems that way uh, instead of under law. Uh, you see, that point is something I see every day. And it doesn't wear off. It doesn't wear off at all. You have the same emotional reaction to it. And uh, I think, my goodness, 